Yo, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here. This is The Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code every morning before we go out and fight the good fight. You can catch the EIA every day at 9 a.m. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, I'm pumped about today's video. Today, we're going to talk about just some of the rules surrounding the .83 rule. If you haven't watched it, I've got a video, the .83 rule explained. You can check it out on my channel. We're going to briefly co cover it today if you've never heard of it at all. So the .83 rule says that for services that are 1 through 400 amps, okay, on a single family dwelling or on the individual units of a two family or multifamily dwelling unit, I can apply a 0.83 demand factor to the service size. And let's talk about that. So first, how do we even get the service size? So let's say we have a single family dwelling, okay? We do our load calculation and we end up with 186 amps, okay? What we would do then is we would head over to 240.6a and we would choose the next standard breaker, okay? And what that's going to do, in, in this case, it's going to be a 200 amp breaker. So we have a 200 amp breaker. That is now the size of our service, okay? Now from that point, we can take that 200 amp number and apply a 0.83 demand factor. So you take 200 multiplied by 0.83, and that is going to give you a new reduced load that you size your wire by, okay? So I would go to my impacity table, I would choose from the 75 degree C column, depending on what wire I'm using, and I would go size the wire to cover the new load after I did the 0.83 rule, okay? If this were a commercial building where you cannot apply the 0.83 rule, I would have to take my 186 amp load and I would have to go to the ampacity table and find a wire that met it or exceeded it enough to cover that load. Because that's how we size normal loads, isn't it? We find a wire that meets the amp draw that we have or exceeds it. So let's talk about when you cannot apply the 0.83 rule, okay? So the 0.83 rule cannot be applied on multifamily or one and two or two family dwelling units. So a multifamily is three or more. A two family is a what we'll call a duplex for ease in this video. So you cannot apply it to the service portion of those two type buildings. Okay, let me give an example. So let's say I had a four unit apartment complex. Okay, and each one of those units was going to have a hundred amp breaker. Okay, on the side feeding whatever is, you know, whether it's buses or a main breaker, on this side, on the line side of that service, I cannot use the 0.83 rule, okay? But for the individual units, I can use the 0.83 rule, which is really handy, especially if you're doing a big apartment complex, it'll save a lot of money in wire. So if I have a 100 amp breaker, I can take that 100 amps, multiply it by 0.83, and then go size my wire, choosing aluminum or copper, respectively, whichever one I want to choose. The whole point of the 0.83 rule is to save you money. If I have a smaller wire, I could potentially have a smaller pipe. I could potentially have, you know, smaller fittings. Everything's very expensive nowadays, uh, which ultimately will save me money in the long run. So we cannot apply the 0.83 rule on the service side of a two-family or multifamily dwelling unit. Now, but let me talk about now before we get off about the number one misnomer of the 0.83 rule. And I think this is where a lot of us get off track when we're dealing with it. So let's say, let's go back to our first example, the 186 amp load on a single family dwelling. Okay, you would go size your 200 amp main breaker, but I think a lot of people go back and apply the 0.83 rule to that 186 amp load calculation. And that's not how it works. The code states that it must be based off the size of the service. So let's say we had that 186 amp load, we select a 200 amp main breaker, that's the service now, and that's what we apply the 0.83 rule. Let's say you had a 212 amp load, 212 amp load, we go back to 240.6a, we select our next standard size, it's going to be a 225 amp main breaker. That 225 amp number is what we apply the 0.83 rule to. Let's talk about when you never can apply the 0.83 rule in commercial work or anything outside of a 1 through 400 amp service, okay, on a single family dwelling unit or on the individual units of a two family or multifamily dwelling unit. But in commercial, you can never apply the 0.83 rule, okay? And what the 0.83 rule, just to give you a, uh, an idea of why we're allowed to use 4 on aluminum, okay? The 0.83 in, in residential, it's because the 0.83 rule allows us to do that. Uh, you know, uh, four uh, aluminum is not enough to cover 200 amps, but it's enough to cover 
200 multiplied by 0.83. Okay, and that's why we're allowed to use it. But if you notice in commercial, it's always stepped up a notch, right? Uh, in residential, what do we use? Two watt copper, right? We use two watt copper when we can apply the 0.83 rule. But in commercial, what do you always see? You see three watt copper, don't you? And the reason is because is they're not allowed to use the 0.83 rule. So going forward, I just want you guys to know that uh, you can use the 0.83 rule when you're doing single family dwellings. You also, uh, with services that are one through 400 amps, you can use it on the individual apartments of the two family or multifamily dwelling unit. You also can use it um, never when you're in commercial work. So I hope you guys have a great day. Have a safe Happy New Year's tonight. Don't drink and drive. I hope you guys stay safe. Please like, subscribe, and share. I just want to see you guys win. Let's get to it.